Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be looking at 192GB of DDR5 on a ASRock X870E Phantom Gaming Nova Wi-Fi motherboard. So, I'm going to try this out and see how high we can get this memory to run. The target speed that I'm going to aim for is 6000 with 192 gigs of memory. Now this is not the easiest thing to do. It's actually a lot harder to do than trying to run so DDR5 at 8,000 with two sticks of single rank. So that's like significantly easier than this. Uh, we've done videos on this topic in the past. If you're upgrading from two memory sticks to four sticks of memory, uh, assuming you're going to get a second of the original kit. So let's say, for example, you had this kit of memory with those two sticks right there in A2 and B2. And then you want to double up so you get the same exact kit. You want to make sure that because that's an older kit of memory and the other one that was just purchased is newer, there could be some micro tolerance differences from manufacturing because they're different batches. So you're gonna to wanna to move those two original sticks so that they're on channel A or channel B, but they both need to be on the same channel. Then what you'll do is you'll take the second new kit and you'll put that one on its own channel. So for example here, what I need to do is I need to move I need to move the first kit so that it's on the same channel see so now the old kit of memory is on channel A1 and A2 that's the first channel that's channel A and then the new kit of memory is going to go on channel B they were manufactured at different times so there could be hardware revisions slight changes to the PCB, but they should be able to run exactly the same in terms of the voltages, in terms of the speeds, etc. Okay, so once all four memory kits are in there, now we're going to go ahead and boot up the computer and let it do the initial post. Alright, so we're going to do the initial boot here. Power it on, and there we go. As expected, code 15, here comes all the memory. And I'm going to let this go in in real time, so I'm not going to really edit this part of the video because I want to give people an idea of how long the memory training will take when you have 192 gigabytes of memory because this is a lot of RAM. And I did not clear the CMOS, so one of the things I could have done to speed up this process is we could have cleared the CMOS But we're just going to let this play out. See if I turn this. Is this a better angle? Zoom out a little bit. But it's going to take a while. Because it's a lot of RAM. Because the camera is focusing on that light of the AIO, it just seems like it's super dark. Alright, once it progresses, you'll start seeing the code change there, and then also the GPU's LED will come on, indicating that it has successfully trained the memory. All right, EC, so there's an error code. So it turned off. That's because what it tried to do, it tried to load the Expo profile that was on there for the two sticks, and that wasn't working. So it basically is like, nope, we have to go back to default. So what it's going to do now, and this is that, I could have skipped all of that if I had cleared the CMOS. But that gives people an idea of what to expect if you don't clear the CMOS. So now it's basically doing default JDEC memory training. So what's going to happen now is it's going to train and it's going to come up at 3600 mega transfers for DDR5 or 3600 megahertz because that is the official supported memory speed for this capacity. This is a 2 DPC configuration with dual rank dim so this is considered worst case scenario which means the official supported speed 
maximum expected speed is going to be 3600 on DDR5. So that is actually really slow for DDR5. Um, anything above that will be considered an overclock and is not guaranteed. So we're going to try to see if we can get it to run at 6000. That's not guaranteed, but we're going to see if this will work. The memory itself is rated for 6400 on an XMP profile. And this is the exact same memory that I've used in previous videos on this topic. We've shown this on Gigabyte. We've shown this, I believe we've shown this on the Aorus Master from Gigabyte. So that one I know works. We've also done this with a Tai Chi. So here we go. It looks like it's coming up. And the GPU GeForce RTX is up. So that's a good sign. It's going to post soon. And I want to make sure I can catch it, get it to go into the BIOS. And also the fans have quieted down. Alright, here comes the... And there we go, that's the postcode beep. That's what I want to hear. And we are in. Okay, so once we're in the BIOS, you can see, as expected, it came up all 192 gigabytes of memory is at 3600 mega transfers. So now we're going to do... We're going to set the memory to DDR5 6000 and I'm going to leave the voltages here at like the 1.35 because that's from the XMP profile. Now one of the things that we can try doing here to verify if it will work, we can try the, the nice about ASRock is ASRock lets you manually select the JDEC profile. They're the only one that I know of that lets you actually load the JDEC profile. So let's let's try that JDEC profile. So DDR5 5600. Actually, we have a choice here. We can do the XMP. So let's, let's just go XMP1 6400, but we don't want to run at 6400. That's too much. So what we'll do is we will back that down to 6000. Keep these voltages the same. And then the other thing here that is probably going to be uh, requiring some tuning is the DRAM bus control. Okay, so to set these manually, we're going to change RTT nominal to... This is nominal RD. Nominal RD will, will do 60 ohms. And then nominal RW right should be the same. So 60, so it should be symmetrical. And then RTT right... RTT right, we'll do 120. And then RTT park, we will do 48. And then DQ S RTT park, this will be 48. And then drive, DQ drive strength, we will do DQ DS, we'll do 34. And Proct ODT will be 48. Nope, not 50, 48. And then processor DQDS. So this is Proct DQDS. This will be the lowest one, 34.3. And then I believe this one, CADS, will be 30 ohms. So we're going really low on these primary resistances on the processor side. So the main thing here is whether or not it can prevent or avoid signal reflection because by going really low on impedance you're going to have the you could potentially introduce reflections when you have low impedance or low resistance so that is one of the drawbacks of doing this but this is technically this is kind of required here unless i don't know bios can get better at figuring these out manually anyway or automatically i should say but anyway this is going to be the settings that we set for the on die and then I'm going to leave these, assuming that these will work. And then 6,000, and then the voltages. And then, uh, mm, I guess we'll just leave this on auto for now, and then 1.2. 1.2 is kind of high for VSOC, but because, uh, well, we'll just leave it like this. So we're going to change that, apply this, and then hopefully this will work. Okay, so I had to do a lot more trial and error than I thought I would need to, but here we are. We're now running at 192 gigabytes at DDR5 6000 as shown here. 
And the trick to get this to work was to not use the XMP profile at all, nor to use the included JDEC profile. Instead, what I did was I simply set the voltages to the 1.35 volts for VDDIO and VDD and VDQ. These are the 1.35 volts is the voltage for the XMP profile on this memory kit. So I set those and then I went to the bus configuration and I put back in my bus values for the impedance. The impedance values that we've shown in previous videos, these are the magic numbers, so here they are. So you guys can feel free to copy these if you have the Nova because this is what you're going to need. Because uh, those are the secret settings that actually make it work. And then uh, the other thing was I manually set it to DDR5-6000. And then I also let all of the primaries, everything here was all auto. All this was auto. The only thing I manually set was the impedance values. And then after that, it came up with like really loose primaries. It was like cast latency 50 and then like 48, 48. It was like some really, really loose number. So then all I did was I just typed in manually the primary timings from the memory kit and you can get those on your actual memory sticks assuming you know what memory kit you're using. So in this case, 32, 39, 39, 102. These are the four primary timings for this kit of RAM for 6400, but we're not doing 6400, we're doing 6000. Because when we do 6000, we can still maintain a one-to-one -one ratio without having to worry about things. So with that, we have it running at 6000 now. So now the next step is to actually test the stability. So for that, I'm going to need to boot from the USB thumb drive. Let's move this here and let's move that there. So let's do, let's do this. And uh, I, I think there's a way to boot in from here from the thumb drive, but I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna boot into the thumb drive now, which has memtest. So we can t do memtest 86, and verify the stability without impacting the operating system. Okay, so here, because I have adjusted the boot priority, here we go, retrieving hardware info. Now we are loading Memtest 86, which I have installed on a USB thumb drive that I use for debugging systems like this, or not debugging, but in this case, testing the stability of the memory. So we're gonna let Memtest boot up. Here we go, pass mark Memtest 86. I highly recommend you do something like this outside of your operating system if you're trying to overclock this much memory. So now it's just gonna go ahead and start, I didn't do anything so it automatically loads the script and starts doing the memory test. So here it's going to check for errors. So you're gonna to wanna to let this run for a while. You know, I don't know, at least do like one pass to be certain that it can at least pass one full pass. But you can leave this running for several hours and see if it increments any errors because the main thing that we want to make sure of is that we don't get any errors. If it can do the four passes, it's pretty much good, but this will take a very long time to complete. But this is how I ensure the stability of my memory overclocks because I don't want to risk corrupting my operating system because overclocking RAM is far more detrimental to your system and your files and things if it is unstable compared to overclocking a CPU or a GPU. Because if the CPU is unstable or the GPU is unstable due to a bad overclock, the worst thing that can happen is you get the blue screen and you just have to, you know, like back down the overclock. But if your RAM is unstable, and this is what a lot of people don't talk about, if the RAM is unstable, you can actually corrupt your Windows operating system where then you'll have to reinstall Windows and you definitely don't want to be trying to do that with unstable memory. But what's even worse is that you could potentially corrupt files on your system. So like, for example, if you load a file into memory and you make an edit, then you save that edit to your permanent file on the SSD. If the RAM is unstable and it corrupts the file, then now you've saved a corrupt version to your SSD. So now you've permanently corrupted and damaged a file and there isn't really a way for you to recover that unless you have a backup. So that is the reason why I can't stress this point enough. 
if you want to run 192 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes of RAM, and you want to run it at 6,000 mega transfers like what I'm doing here, you absolutely need to ensure that the memory will be stable. And what I'm doing here is verifying that this overclock is stable. So we're going to let this run for probably a while to let it pass and make sure there's no errors. And then we'll cut to the end here and report back when everything's good. It'll probably show the operating system at that point. All right, so I've been letting this run for a while. You can see that it has been running for over two hours now. And it did, it's on the second pass out of four, as shown there. And it did pass, finished pass one out of four with no errors and no ECC errors. So it looks like this is probably going to be stable because I know I've been able to get this to work on Gigabyte last year. And ASRock and Gigabyte so far seem to be the best options if you're looking to run a whole lot of RAM, like 128 gigabytes or more, for example. These two brands, for some reason, these guys, they they seem to be better with these Proct ODT values. So I'm going to let this run a bit longer here, see if it can pass the other runs here. Um, but it looks pretty good. I would say this is probably going to be 100% stable. Uh, once this is done, assuming that there are no errors, we will get into the operating system. And then we will just verify with a game that everything seems to be working. Okay, so I did let it go through Memtest for several hours. So it did four passes of Memtest. 86 took a really long time, um, as expected. But you guys can see here, now we are testing with Forspoken because Forspoken is a very good memory stability test game because it uses Direct Storage 1.0, which means that it leverages the CPU for decompression, which means that it's going to potentially use or hit the RAM pretty hard, depending on what's going on. So you guys can see here, for example, we have 192 gigabytes of system memory running at 6,000 mega transfers. So that's it, and it works, and it's on the Nova. So that's it, and there we go. The ASRock Nova Phantom Gaming, 192 gigabytes of system memory, running at DDR5 6000. So that is going to be it. So it does look like, for those of you that do want to run high-density dual-rank 2DPC setups, you can totally do that with this motherboard. So that is really good to see. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, uh, but the, pretty much the settings are there. That's pretty much plug and play. You just have to get it, you have to get the right memory kit, I'll say. Probably the memory kit does matter as well, in addition to the motherboard, but there you go. That's max capacity DDR5 at 6,000 on a ASRock X870E Nova Wi-Fi. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.